think you should Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode for Dragon Ball Super episode review and today we're going to be doing episode 123 and obviously in the last like two episodes last week and then of course this week uh, a lot of stuff for the Vegeta fanboys a lot of Vegeta fanboys are really excited and, and and that's fair I understand completely so the last episode we continue off where we left off last week of course and that is that Vegeta is on the ground. He got beat by Jiren. Jiren kind of, kind of slapped him around and stuff. It was kind of, kind of just how it is. And the episode kind of just starts off with Vegeta on the ground. Goku's shocked. Jiren turns around, crosses his arms for whatever stupid reason. And then of course Goku starts getting ready to fight Jiren because that's the whole premise of the episode. That's the main fight that does happen. But before we do get to see Goku and Jiren fight. Uh, we do get to see a couple other fights, and that's with Frieza and Dispo. They get they scrap a little bit, but it's not uh, it's not a whole lot. But we do see a little bit. So uh, the last time we did we did see Dispo and Frieza kind of fighting. Uh, Frieza kind of wrapped his tail around Dispo's like wrist, and then Dispo started running in the opposite direction, slamming his head into the wall, which looked really cool last week or in the last episode. Um, and then Frieza gets up and it just seemingly just doesn't do anything. Um, Frieza was completely unscathed and isn't sweating at all about the uh, the attack that Dispo just did to him. If anything, Frieza's like, is this the extent of the whatever trooper's power? That's what he says, and I thought it was really funny. And that's like a that's like a Frieza moment of anything, like 100%. It was actually pretty funny. And then we get another shot and another fighting scene with Seventeen and Gohan versus Topo. And then, of course, Topo, for whatever reason, just kind of, like, thrashes and throws around these two. Um, I don't mind the whole, like, tag team with Seventeen and Gohan. I feel like... I feel like it almost kind of works, but... You know, we don't, we haven't, we probably won't see enough of it in order to really appreciate it. But we do get this, and so Seventeen is like, okay, I'm gonna trap him in my barrier. I'm gonna trap him, and then you're gonna take that advantage and knock the both of us off, right? And I was like, oh, well, I mean that's smart, but I don't know. I feel like you can almost use the number advantage against Jiren because even though. Goku and Vegeta are going to be fighting him the most. I feel like that would still kind of help. Anyways, 17 charges at Topo. Topo grabs his arm, kind of like th like throws it. I don't know how to explain what he does, but basically grabs his arm eight, not 18, 17 puts his barrier up and then Gohan shoots a Kamehameha and is planning to try to eliminate, el eliminate the both of them off of the arena. So that way, you know, it's then Dispo and Jiren for the last of the Universal Love of Pride Troopers. Uh, then, obviously, to Topo is like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to use 17 as like a barrier of my own so that way I don't get knocked off. He actually almost does get knocked off. And I, re I really thought he was going to get knocked off of this episode for whatever reason. But it doesn't happen. We probably won't see him get eliminated off of the, the stage for a while. But whatever, right? So the the fight goes back to Goku and Jiren, and obviously they're kind of like Goku's like, "Are you okay? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to fight, dude?" Uh, something I do want to mention that did that did happen in this episode is uh, Jiren does acknowledge Vegeta as a warrior, which uh, is like a huge thing because obviously the Hakaioshins of the different universes, such as Universe Eleven. Uh, Belmond, I think that's what his name was, or Velmond, I forget. I forget which which the other two it is. But the Universe Eleven Hakayashin, God of Destruction, he does. He's like, oh, Vegeta should be honored by the fact that Jiren noticed him as a warrior. Da da da, da right? And then uh, Toei actually made a funny scene with uh, with Zeno, the two Zenos, and then uh, one of them was standing. Uh, looking at like the back of his seat and said what Jiren said and then they were like, oh, Jiren's so cool and it's like, oh, that's basically what all, what all the entire fan base of Dragon Ball is saying, that Jiren's like really cool. And yeah, Jiren is cool and all, but he's kind of like bland and boring to be honest. I only thought he was, I don't, I don't, I'm only thinking he's like cool and all because just of how 
stupidly powerful he is, you know. But other than that, he's like super bland and boring, you know. He he like rarely talked the whole tournament. He really he rarely did anything, and then we didn't even see him do much until the first time Goku went Ultra Instinct, you know. And now we're finally getting a little bit more with Jiren. But I thought I'd just point that out there. So that did happen earlier in the beginning of the episode. Uh, Goku, what he starts doing is that as he's trying to find an opening for Jiren, he's actually leaving like little specks of ki on the ground and then using the instant transmission to be able to get around and maneuver a lot quickly around the surrounding area where, where him and Jiren are fighting. And basically what Goku's doing with these specks of keys, leaving them on the ground, is they're kind of like landmines. And I don't think we've ever seen anything like this in Dragon Ball. So the fact that Goku is thinking of new and innovative ways to try to find an opening or maybe knock him off of the knock Jiren off of the arena is is really smart. And I'm glad that Toei is kind of using the rules of the tournament in a lot of different ways, such as uh, later on in the episode or in a fight rather. Uh, Goku starts throwing Kianzans or the destructive disc. He throws like a whole bunch of them. Uh, Jiren is like disintegrating them. He grabs one of them and then he throws it back at Goku. And then later on, uh, they go towards like a like a ledge kind of like thing. I'll probably throw some I images on the screen because I don't really know how to explain certain stuff. But um, yeah, him, uh, Goku and Jiren are fighting there. Jiren is about the he he lands him he lands a punch right in his chest right right in the center of his chest goku is falling backwards and then jiren is ready to throw another right punch to probably like knock him off the arena probably something like that because that's actually where they are they're very close to the edge actually and that's the point is proven there because goku actually uses a technique that krillin actually did a like weeks months ago uh and i guess you can say a filler episode that's now canon is it was when um it was in the episode that kind of pissed off a lot of people when goku went super saiyan blue against krillin in like a sparring match but remember when krillin used a whole bunch of destructive disc he used like a whole bunch of destructive disc to kind of like create like a hole in the ground so that like goku would fall off of the uh, the area that they were on goku did essentially did the same thing by uh, he actually called it the Destructor Disc Hex hex uh, Attack or something like that. I forget what it was. Uh, uh, remind me in the comments if if you do remember what it was. It was actually very interesting. So the whole like ledge area that they're on that uh, gets disintegrated. Jiren is then starting to fall off of the edge of the arena. And I was like... Oh, is he gonna get knocked off? And then I was like, wait a minute. No, it doesn't make any sense because of the previews that we got last week. <laughs> Definitely because of the previews that we got this week. But yeah, Jiren is shown falling off um, the side of the edge. <coughs> uh, Jiren is shown off f f kind of falling towards the edge of the arena. I was like, oh, and then people were like, oh, no, Jiren, he's getting knocked off, especially Belmond, who's freaking out, of course, kind of reminded me of certain someone who I don't really want to mention because I don't like that character whatsoever. <laughs> so it cuts the an ad if you're watching on Crunchyroll, but obviously a commercial if you're watching it on Fuji TV for whatever reason. So uh, Goku is uh, off on the edge too, but of course he uses instant transmission to go towards Vegeta, uh, Jiren uses the rocks and the debris that was falling off of uh, the arena with him to get back on. Uh, there was a whole bunch of other more landmines that Goku had already prepared. Jiren, being the beast that he is, is just walking straight through him, not even, not even caring for what's happening. He just just walks by. He's engulfed in a red aura that looks really cool, uh, it, it, like a really dark red aura. It looks really cool. Uh, even the Universe 11 Hakaioshin, the God of Destruction, is like, oh, I haven't seen Jiren in, like this in a while. And, of course, that's obviously a, a really huge thing because it's like, oh, so does that mean Jiren was holding back the whole time? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Whatever. But, um, Jiren throws a whole bunch of punches towards Goku. He throws a barrage of punches that, uh throw Goku off of his uh, of his Super Saiyan Blue form and back into his base form. He reverts back 
And then it gets to a point where it's like, oh, Goku's not gonna give up. And then Vegeta gets up, uh, gets up too, and he's like, he says like a whole speech about something. Uh, kind of forgot what it was, but it's whatever. So they both power up. They both power up, uh, looking towards Jiren. Uh, Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, which shouldn't be that much of a surprise because if you watch the previews and also in the beginning of the episode where they do show us a couple of clips, he's in Super Saiyan Blue. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was in the beginning of the episode. I don't, I don't remember entirely. Uh, and then Vegeta does go into an ascended form of Super Saiyan Blue. It is it is confirmed, I guess you can say, to be a new transformation because uh, the voice actor for Vegeta in the beginning of the episode during the few intro clips actually does say that it is a power different from Goku, different from Super Saiyan Blue. So uh, uh, Vegeta is remembering like Kava, uh, the whole thing about keeping his promise, the resurrect back, you, at least at least uh, the, the home planet of the Saiyans most likely universe six he remembers that he's gonna keep that promise yada 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 uh he says i'm gonna i'm gonna break through and pass my limits through my own ways and then he transforms uh his hair starts reflecting off different colors like a lighter blue and a darker blue his eyes flash and then he essentially becomes a full power of a, of a super saiyan blue kind of right and it was really cool it honestly looked really cool but the transformation itself is at times for me it's like kind of bland because it's essentially just a darker shade of blue in his eyes and his hair and it almost makes me wish that vegeta had gotten ultra instinct kind of that they both went ultra instinct i feel like that would have been like really cool but whatever but we do get to see um uh the grand priest actually says that he broke through uh, his shell kind of like how Goku did but only that the power of Vegeta got is uh, ascended power that beyond of a Super Saiyan Blue uh, possibly a Su Super Saiyan Blue grade 2 throwback to when Vegeta did that against Cell I don't know but we maybe possibility but yet we have to see whether or not Vegeta gets Ultra Instinct or not but yeah should be exciting uh, they ended off at a cliffhanger with a couple of shots of Goku and Vegeta kind of going going after Jiren, obviously. They throw him off because uh, they can't do a coordinated attack, nor uh, Goku and Vegeta together. But it's because of that that's throwing off Jiren. That's what we says, I'm pretty sure. And it seems that they might have a chance, but they ended off at a cliffhanger. We're gonna get a, we're gonna get an episode next week that isn't gonna do a, a whole that isn't gonna have a whole bunch to do with this fight, but more so with the fight with uh, Gohan, Dispo, and with Frieza. Gohan with Frieza, the two of them are gonna fight Dispo, and it should be hopefully exciting because uh, obviously I I wanted to see Gohan do a lot more in the tournament, and not to say that he didn't do a lot anyways, but obviously I wanted to see more because. I'm a filthy Gohan fanboy. But anyways, that's the end of the episode. And the previews, um, obviously, they show what's going to happen next week. Uh, like I just already explained. So that should be pretty interesting. Hopefully exciting. Uh, animation for this episode at times was... Uh, it hurt. It hurt kind of just to look at a couple of shots. I might throw them up on the screen. Probably not because it doesn't really matter all that much. But um, yeah, but... The, the episode ends off there cliffhanger we're gonna get an episode next week i actually do want to make another video after i watch the most recent episode for dragon ball super's english dub and i kind of want to give off a review of everything that i've watched all the way from the beginning of the first episode to where super in the english dub is currently at because i do like super's english dub i, I feel like because of uh the time areas that the, like funimation has to obviously put Dragon Ball Super on television, of course, they have a lot more freedom with what they can do, and at times it's a lot, it's a lot more entertaining to watch than in the Japanese version. Obviously, Japanese isn't bad, but I'm enjoying this English stuff. But anyways, that's it for me. That's it for me this week. I'll, you'll probably see another video of me uh, in, in the upcoming days, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I do want to make the video like I just mentioned. I have been playing a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters. I might make a video on that, kind of get my general re review on 
on that because I am enjoying it. It is a very fun game to play. Right now the servers are down, which is why I'm recording this video. Uh, anyways, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button and push that notification button so you never miss a new video. If you didn't enjoy, drop a like. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I'm out.